prove the quadratic formula using the technique of completing the square. So a lot of you have seen this formula here, the quadratic formula, which says if we have a, a quadratic equation that can be put in, in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, with a not equal to 0. Now you don't want a to be 0 because if a was 0, that would wipe out this x squared term, and you wouldn't have a quadratic uh, equation anymore. You'd have a linear equation. If you have an equation in this form, then you can find the solutions using this formula. And this might be one of the things that uh, people remember from their high school algebra experience, but proving it is another ball of wax, and some people don't remember that. So I think it's important to know where things come from in mathematics. So we're going to go through a proof here. So with any proof, you're going to start with the given information, which you'll find after the if. So th this is all that's given here, and I'm putting these letters A, B, and C in green. I'm writing them in green to um, clarify that these are numbers. These are going to be given numbers. X is our variable. And I'm going to go ahead and keep them green throughout the whole thing, which is going to take a little extra time. But I think it really highlights that you need to just treat these like numbers. And hopefully when we're all done and we solve for X, we'll end up with this formula. All right, so we're going to start with our given information. Let's see. So we have, I want to change to green here. Can I do that? There we go. So we have, um, I'll just write this all at once. We're going to start with ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. And we want to solve this using completing the square. So when we're completing the square, we really like this uh, coefficient on the x squared term to be 1. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide each term both sides by a. All right, so what is that going to give us? Well, we're going to have um, 1x squared, and then this coefficient is going to be b over a, and this coefficient is going to be c over a. So we're going to have x squared plus b over ax plus c over a equals 0. All right, so now we want to move this c over a to the other side, so we're going to subtract c over a from both sides and now we have x squared plus b over a x and now I'm gonna leave a space here because I want to complete the square so I'm gonna leave a space and I'm gonna draw a box here that's not the most beautiful box and I'm going to have my negative c over a or opposite of c over a on this side. And then I'm going to put another box over here uh, to remind me that I need to balance my equation. All right, so what's going to go in that box is what we're going to get when we complete the square. So we're going to complete the square over here on the, um, on the left-hand side. So remember, when you're completing the square, let's go over here, we're going to take our middle term our term on our, our x, uh, coefficient on our x, b over a. And to complete the square, you take half of that. And if you need review on completing the square, um, I have a video on completing the square. You can go look at that. So we take that value and we square it. All right. So this gives us b over 2a squared, which is b squared over 4a squared. Okay. So that is what we need to add to both sides. Uh, let me get rid of these boxes here so I can make this fit. We're going to add that to both sides and then that's going to complete a perfect square trinomial on the left hand side so we can factor it. Alrighty, so we've got b squared over 4a squared. We're going to add that to both sides. Alright, now we're going to do some simplifying. Okay, so like I said, on the left-hand side, we should have a perfect square trinomial because that's what completing the square does for you. So we've got x and x, all right? And what goes in, uh, in the parentheses on the far right-hand side of each parenthesis needs to multiply together to be b squared over 4a squared. And it has to be the same thing. And it's always going to be this value right here before you squared. So b over 2a. And you could double check that. 
by foiling these two binomials or multiplying these two binomials together and you should get this trinomial here. All right, so on the right hand side we basically have two fractions and what we want to do is add those together so we need to get a common denominator. So I have a 4a squared in this denominator and an a. So I'm going to multiply this first fraction by 4a over 4a. So now my first fraction becomes negative 4ac over 4a squared. And then my second fraction, I still have b squared over 4a squared. But now I have a common denominator. So that's going to allow me to add these fractions together. OK, on the right hand side, or excuse me, on the left hand side now, we've got our perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as a perfect square. And that's going to give me x plus b over 2a quantity squared. And on the right hand side, I'm going to combine these together. So my denominator is 4a squared. OK, my numerator, I could write this as minus 4ac or negative 4ac plus b squared. Or I could write it as b squared minus 4ac. Either way, remember addition is commutative. But look up here. We're trying to get b squared minus 4ac. This is what we're trying to create. This is our goal. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as b squared minus 4ac because I see that expression in my uh, final product. OK, I'm going to erase this over here so I have a little more room. All right, what do we have now? Let's see. I need my equal sign. We're almost there. We're solving for x. We're trying to get x by itself. So if I have a squared here, what I want to do to get x out from underneath that and the whole reason we created that we used the uh, completing the square is so we could take the square root of both sides. And that'll give me x plus, right? When I take the square root of a perfect square, I'm just going to end up with what's inside. And we do need to be careful because it could be a positive or a negative value under there. Uh, if this thing squared, like this thing in here could be a positive or a negative. So this answer over here could come out to be plus or minus the square root of all this stuff. Let's see. Oh, we'll just do this in green. b squared minus 4ac over 4 a squared. All right. So remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get x by itself, and we're hoping that it comes out to look like this. This is our final goal over here. All right, let's move over here. So it looks like a good idea would be to subtract b minus or b over 2a from both sides so we can get x by itself. Okay, so I'm going to take this b over 2a and I'm going to subtract it from both sides. So when I subtract it, it's going to be negative b over 2a on this side. And then I've got my plus or minus and my big old square root. I'll just write all this in green now. Okay, now if I look at this square root, look at what we're trying to end up with here. There's only a square root in the numerator. There's no square root in the denominator. Hmm. But what I have here, I have a square root of a numerator and a denominator. So let's look at this denominator. Can we simplify what's in that denominator? And I think we can. I think we could take the square root of it. So we're using this rule that says um, if you have the square root of a fraction, say, oh, let's do s over t, you can analyze that by taking the square root of s over the square root of t. So that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to split this fraction up and look at the square root of the top, the numerator, and the square root of the bottom, denominator. Okay, so I'm going to split this up. This could be b squared minus 4ac all over here, the square root of 4a squared. Well, the square root of 4a squared is going to be 2a. That looks promising. Looks like we're almost there. OK, so we've got the opposite of b over 2a. I'm just going to write this all in green now, plus or minus. And what about, can I take the square root of this b squared? No, I can't because of the subtraction sign, okay? 
our rules for radicals, we have this rule, and then we have, oh, let's write it down here. We have, if we had the square root of s times t, that would be the square root of s times the square root of t. But if you have the square root of s minus t, which is kind of what we have here, something minus something, that is not equal to the square root of s minus the square root of t. And you could test that out by plugging in numbers for s and t and see if it works, like if that's 9 and that's 4. Is the square root of 9 minus 4, which is the square root of 5, the same as the square root of 9 minus the square root of 4? And if you look on your calculator and mess around with that, I think you can convince yourself pretty easily that's not true. So this numerator, I can't really do anything with it. I just have to leave it as the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is OK for me, because that's what I'm trying to get over here. All right, so the denominator is going to simplify to 2a. Now I basically have two fractions that have a common denominator, so I can add those together. And what are we going to get? The opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Bam, we did it. All right, so we use the technique of completing the square. Ooh, that's a rough line. That's OK. We use the technique of completing the square, this makes me happy, to prove the quadratic formula. So now you don't have to use completing the square to solve quadratic equations anymore unless you really love completing the square. What you've done here is you've shown that by completing the square with any values, with any values a, b, and c, if I took any values a, b, and c and completed the square, I'd end up with this equation. You have solved every quadratic equation by completing the square, where a, b, and c are real numbers. You've done it for every single value of a, b, and c, whether it's a positive or a negative or a fraction or a decimal, no matter what a, b, and c um, are, this is what would happen, and you would end up with that. So now, no matter how complicated the values of a, b, and c, you can just plug them right into this formula. You've already solved it for every possibility, and that is the power of this formula. Now you can just use that, and it becomes very easy to solve quadratic equations. So I have some other videos that show solving using uh, this formula, and if you'd like to see some examples of that, I'd encourage you to check them out.